The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day. Amen. Welcome to worship this day. Today we're talking about roads, about following Jesus. We're talking about the fast lane, the roadblocks, the detours, the things that get in our way, the things that make it go better for everyone. Welcome to worship. May we all hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Let's pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. Shower us with your spirit, 
and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you we give an honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Prayer of the day. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. The first reading is from Romans, chapter 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on the heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? 
For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Gracious and almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and our minds be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. And we give you thanks. Amen. Last Sunday, we had the gospel reading about the disciple Simon Peter answering the question, and who do people say that I am? Simon answered correctly, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. In response, Jesus gave Peter the new name. He said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. It was a glorious moment that Peter got it right. And we say, you got to love Peter. He's the rock-solid foundation on which the early church was built. He's a model for our faith. He helped build what we have today. And it gives us hope for ourselves that we might be the church, which has power and hope and life, like Peter exemplified in the early church. Today's Gospel reading, you gotta love Peter, not so much. Today's reading reminds us that no one is perfect. Peter reminds us in today's story that sometimes, instead of the foundations of faith, we become the stumbling blocks. Sometimes we get in Jesus' way. In the context of this gospel, Jesus has now revealed to the disciples who he is. And now Jesus is telling them what is to come. He's warning them. They've just learned what no one wants to hear, that pretty soon your hope is going to be crushed. There's going to be suffering and death and despair. It's like receiving a fatal diagnosis from which you cannot recuperate. And Peter does not want to hear it. Peter's really struggling with this. And we do too. How do we make sense of these two things? That Jesus is God's promise come to life, that the kingdom of God has come near, and that eternal life is a reality. And death will come. Evil still has some power. And death is going to take away for a while everything that is good and hopeful and loving. How can both of these be true? Peter doesn't want it to be so. He loves Jesus. He has pledged to follow Jesus through the thick and the thin. And he was thinking that it was going to be far more pleasant than suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. We don't want it to be that way either. We don't want Jesus to suffer. Every year in Lent, during Holy Week, when we focus on the suffering of Jesus, on his way to the cross, every year I think, I wish it didn't have to be this way. I wish this story could play out differently. I wish that God would have chosen to overcome evil and death and pain and suffering. And I wish God would have installed Jesus as supreme commander and avoided all of this unnecessary suffering. I wish that God would have chosen to save Jesus then. But that's not how the story goes. In Matthew's Gospel, in the fourth chapter, we read the story of Satan tempting Jesus. I'll give you this bread. I'll give you this power. I'll give you these kingdoms. And Jesus says, no. Jesus doesn't choose to fill his own stomach. He doesn't he chooses instead to use his power to feed the hungry crowds who are following him. Instead of taking the power for himself, Jesus left 
the power for God to use for the sake of the world. Jesus could have healed and saved himself indeed, but instead he followed God's path and he saved and he healed the marginalized and the sick and the suffering. By doing it this way, Jesus showed us God's way of doing things. Jesus showed us what it looks like to love God and to serve our neighbor. Jesus took the hard road for the sake of us all. I wish Jesus didn't have to suffer so terribly and so unjustly on the way to the cross. But his suffering was temporary. For Jesus, it was a few days of trials and abandonment. For Jesus, it was a few hours on the cross. For Jesus, it was three days in the tomb. And all the while, Easter and freedom and new life were coming. In his eagerness to defend Jesus, Peter jumps up and he tries to protect Jesus from what's coming down the road. And we're surprised to hear Jesus rebuke Peter, saying, get behind me, Satan. Jesus doesn't want Peter to be a block between Jesus and the goal. Jesus needs his eyes on the goal and the path that is ahead of him. Peter isn't helping by trying to redirect Jesus' attention. Peter, in effect, has become a barrier. There's a very fine line between being a rock and the solid foundation and becoming a stumbling block and a roadblock. When we follow Jesus, we can become agents of grace and mercy. We can offer hope and new life. We can help people to heal. Or we can look to our own interest and try to protect ourselves. And in so doing, we become barriers to what God's doing in the world. Rock or stumbling block? We have the choice. Are we going to choose fear or faithfulness? Are we going to try to bend the story to fit our preferred narrative? Or are we going to let God manage it in God's time, according to God's goodwill? Are we going to prevent God from doing what needs to be done? Or are we going to be steadfast in our hope that God is God, even with our best intentions, we can obstruct God's will. When we jump in, when we try to save Jesus from himself, we keep Jesus from doing his mission. Notice where Jesus stands on this issue. Time and time again in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus invites the disciples, follow me. In Matthew chapter 4, the first disciples, Jesus says, follow me, and he welcomes them to become his students. In Matthew 10, Jesus encourages his people to love Jesus more than anything else and to follow him. And in today's passage, in Matthew 16, Jesus says to Peter and the disciples, Take up your cross and follow me. To follow means to go behind. Jesus is inviting the disciples to walk behind him in his footsteps. We're not forging our own road, breaking new ground. We're not taking new paths. We'll find that the places we go, well, Jesus has been here before us. Jesus has seen pain, has seen suffering has seen desperate need, and Jesus has offered healing and grace and peace. To follow Jesus is to walk in that same hard road that Jesus walked to the cross. We're not taking the easy road, the one that gives us power or allows us to take care of only ourselves. We are choosing this day to follow in Jesus' footsteps to forego our own glory, and to let God's kingdom come.
What does that actually look like? It looks like Romans chapter 12. So hear it again. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to the stranger. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is what rock solid faithfulness looks like. By doing this, we remove the roadblocks, the barriers, and the walls between people who need it and God's grace. This is how we follow Jesus and invite others to join us on the road. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord of life, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord of life, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peacefully with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill us all leaders with mercy, understanding that they may advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most valuable in their communities. Lord of life, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord of life, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering and pers persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Here, other intercessions may be offered. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, especially in our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord of life, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, knowing that you do not walk this road alone, but that you're following in Christ's footsteps. So keep your eyes on Christ. Walk boldly. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.